Let's move on to the other big talking point, and this one involves our youngsters who've gone to United States of America for their higher studies and now may be in a bit of a fix. And I say that because I'm sure you've heard by now the Trump administration has tweaked the visa rules temporarily, they say, but it's a big change that has happened. Now, the fears were larger, the concerns were larger about what finally the change will be and the extent of impact it may have. To that extent, I think some people have heaved a sigh of relief that at least the Trump administration has, has given them a few options and things that they can do to stay back. What am I talking about? Basically, the change in rules have been announced for F1 and M1 visa holders. Now, these are largely <coughs> used by, you know, youngster students uh, from India and everywhere else who go to USA to study there. Now, essentially what United States is saying is that if you're purely taking an online class because of the pandemic and the way the world has changed and the way we now function very differently, and if you're only taking online classes, then you are not going to be allowed to stay in United States anymore. Please go back home. These are online classes. You know, don't need to be in the country. <coughs> On the other hand, if you are actually taking a combination of Personal, uh, you know, classes which are physical, which require physical presence and involvement, then there is a possibility that you can stay back. So there have been restrictions, not just on entering, but even for those who already are there, at, uh, uh, are there, and that's become a huge issue, viewers. Because let's just uh, face it: from our country, there are about two lakh students currently work, uh, studying there. In United States, there are Chinese, there are South Koreans, uh, you know, uh, from other nations as well. A large number of students who are right now thinking how this is going to change their life. Now, many universities will actually also have to start looking at this differently. How many online classes are they holding? Is their entire semester for the fall uh, uh, term going to be just online? Then what happens to the students that have already enrolled? Many questions. Uh, that we have. Let's go across to our guests to get you the answers to these questions of how life changes. And I've got uh, uh, Saurabh Arora, founder and CEO of University Living, who's joining us right now. And Jeff uh, DeSico, Chief Executive Officer of Canam Investor Services, joins us this evening uh, with, their, uh, with his views as well on what's really happening. Um, Saurabh, let me begin with you. How does this impact, uh, you know, lives of Indian students abroad or planning to go to U.S. and to what extent? Right. Uh, well, thanks, Tanvi, for inviting me on the show. Uh, definitely, you know, it doesn't sound good. Uh, the impact will be negative. As we all know that Indian is the second largest after Chinese, uh, which contribute, uh, you know, uh, to the overall uh, students in U.S. So uh, this doesn't uh, contribute uh, uh, brought down well, and uh, you know if uh, this is if you see this is the latest in the series of moves uh, by the president uh, Trump uh, uh, against immigrants. You know, uh, you remember uh, in June, you know he also cancelled all the work-related uh, visa uh, till end of the, this year. So definitely, you know, it doesn't uh, 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 seems good. But I still believe that we need to hold up. There's lots of uncertainty. In the morning, I was, you know, I've been told that uh, U.S. Uh, Indian Secretary Mr. Siridal spoke uh, with, the, with the with the U.S. Uh, immigrant uh, departments, and uh, they are still, you know, rethinking. And so I believe there's uncertainty, and it will be too soon to jump the gun to to see what exactly, you know, whether the whether this rule is uh, for sure. It I believe they will definitely rethink. Because if you talk about the numbers, you know, uh, approximately 18% of overall international students comes from India, right? And this is like 5.5% of total uh, international, uh, you know, total uh, students population in US is being uh, made by international students and out of which, which contribute to around $41 uh, billion. So that's, that's, that's huge, right? So I, I don't think Pronounce US... Names, so I don't think U.S. or for that matter any country at this point in time can afford, you know, uh, loss of that kind of revenue. So, so yeah. Okay. Uh, let me also bring in Mr. Dechiko on this, uh, uh, Mr. Dechiko, and I hope and I'm pronouncing your name right. Else, please do feel free to correct me. But thank you for speaking with us. Uh, can you help us understand, you know, and add to what Mr. Arora is saying about the impact on? Uh, foreign students right now in United States are planning to come for this term. 
Yeah, thank you for having me. So I think it's what you've seen this week has been sort of a one-two punch, uh, specifically to Indian and Chinese students in that first, uh, Harvard announced that they're going to all online classes for the 2020-2021 academic year. Um, Harvard's seen, obviously, often as a standard bearer in the U.S. And then President Trump's announcement on the 22nd uh, hit twofold. So now you have an issue where, where students who've been studying in the U.S. potentially have to leave and could even be deported. Um, what I think will probably happen over the next few weeks is you will see uh, that some of these universities, as they are businesses at the end of the day, will start to reconsider their policies and then gear more toward what are called hybrid classes, where there are some students in class and some out of class. And the U.S. Uh, has indicated that they'll make some exceptions for those students. Um, I think at the end of the day, though, it really is just uh, it's just showing the current mood of this administration toward restricting many types of immigration. It's getting more and more difficult for those to come to the U.S. Okay, what could be possibly these solutions? Because obviously, you know, because of the pandemic, all universities are also re-looking at the way classes are held or courses are conducted. Um, is the, uh, the fact that they have now said that if you have um, at least one instructional class and which requires uh, uh, physical presence or one-on-one -on -one interaction, uh, then maybe you will not be deported or sent back unless all of your classes are online. Is that caveat, is that change going to help? So, uh, I I'll think, take it up for yeah, you. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so, you know, uh, oh, Tani, uh, you know <laughs> so, Tani, if you go, you know, definitely all the universities yes, are Mr. also Arora, go ahead. Yeah. All the universities have also gone around. You know, if we talk about Harvard, right? Harvard has gone for blended, uh, blended course, right? Initially, they have went all online, as, as your screen is also protecting. But if you see, Harvard has gone blended, and most of the universities across the globe, uh, whether it's UK or in Australia, they are in the first trimester they are going online. Uh, so initially, uh, you know, they are all going online, but you know, because it's a huge business and they can't afford to lose international students, so most of the universities have gone blended wherein, you know, it will not be fully online. And if it's fully online, definitely, you know, this ICE uh, di directives will be a uh, really, really, uh, uh, you know, really, really uh, strong move uh, by Trump regime against international students. Yes, Mr. Uh, DeChico, do you want to come in as well on that? If, uh, you know, that specific caveat will lower the impact or at least lesser number of students will now have to perhaps come back? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's what the universities are going to have to do. Uh, I believe the number of uh, percentage of income that foreign students pay for universities is somewhere around 8%, perhaps more. Um, they don't want to lose those revenues, especially after they've lost housing and other income over this past year. So they're going to have to do something like that. I have heard stories of some universities moving to where first year and, and graduating students will be on campus in the fall and second and third year in the spring semester where they can offer hybrid like that as well. Um, that would definitely seem to be like a solution. But, you know, it's getting very late in the game. Uh, school, schools begin to open up, especially in the South and the United States in, in about five weeks or so. So this is things that people are going to have, have to act very mm. quickly over the next week or two. Yes, and I think that's where the larger concern and the chaos really lies. But Mr. DiCicco, very quickly also, uh, while the administration, Trump administration says that this is a temporary measure, is there a concern that this may just be an excuse to really implement yet another, uh, you know, anti-immigrant policy and reduce the number of people coming to the country? And it may never actually go back. No, I think that's always a concern. It's always a concern that something that becomes temporary and then leaves the news cycle, uh, they can make permanently more quietly. And so I think there are a lot of people nervous about that. In, in our business, which is specifically the EB-5 visa, um, we've been lucky in that that hasn't been touched by the, by the administration. It's been excluded from all the other travel bans. So there remains very few... We lost.
lost the line with you, Mr. Dechiko. I'm really sorry if you can just repeat the last point you made. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Uh, no, I was just saying that um, with, with all the other crackdowns, we, there remain very few options uh, that are secure now for for foreign for foreigners to come to the U.S. Um, and it seems like you know, the, there are very few programs with, that have been un, left untouched from from the administration's bans. Yeah, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Uh, very quickly also, Saurabh Barora, does this, will people have to now rethink, um, you know, their their plans of studying in United States going, in, you know, uh, in the future as well, not just because of the, these changes, but the messaging that's really coming and you don't want to be in a position where you uh, save so much money, spend lakhs and lakhs of money to send your child uh, to United States to study and then you're staring at a situation where that uh, child has to come back um, and perhaps not have, not, uh, not pursue the future that they had otherwise envisioned post these higher studies. Right, Tanvi. Uh, so, Tanvi, interestingly, despite, uh, you know, uh, President Trump uh, adoption of what could be, uh, you know, uh, called anti-immigrant policy, right, in 1718, the number rose, uh, you know, interestingly, by 1.7%. Uh, because, you know, we, we still, you know, as a, as a community, as Indians, we still believe that, you know, we are still chasing uh, U.S. dreams, you know. Uh, though many of the students have started looking out, looking out for options, you know, they are probably U.S., uh, you know, you uh, you know, comparatively, UK uh, government is very committed for international students. Uh, Australian island, you know, uh, the COVID, the the way they manage COVID, you know, uh, Indian students are very, you know, they are really looking Australian island for this year. Uh, uh, and uh, UK being, you know, really welcoming, you know, even with the post study visa. So most of the most of our students, most of uh, you know, commute Indian students where we are coming up, that they are looking out for US for the uh, UK for this year. And but yes, you know, I guess uh, this structural change, you know, in the mind of any student that U.S. is the you know dream college, and you know because UK and even in in Germany or other uh, countries, there are lots of good high rank universities. So probably for this year, definitely, you know, uh, there are lots of students who are uh, who are who are sitting on the fence, and probably they will go to UK or Australia uh, instead of uh, U.S. So yes, definitely trends are changing. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Sora Barura and uh, Jeff Dechiko, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and thank you for, you know, uh, giving us those insights. Uh, obviously, a big, big change that has happened for any student who's there in the United States right now, uh, you know, pursuing a higher studies course or was planning to. And this is a clear signal from the Trump administration that they will uh, continue with their, these kind of policies which are more anti-immigrant but at this point of time what the students there will have to figure out with their universities if there are combinations you know a mix match of case uh, courses available so that everything isn't online if all of your classes are online then you have no option you will be deported back home thank you so much for joining us on this conversation quick break on the other side lots of important news developments lined up for you stay with me